There we go. All right. Yeah, clearly I'm not the most tech savvy person in the world. So thanks for your patience in getting started here. Uh, look like we're, looks like we're still getting some people signing in uh, today, which is great. And uh, one thing I'll point out is that we are taking questions today. This is mainly a Q&A that we're doing, actually. So keep in mind that we've got two different panels that you should see in your GoToWebinar controls, either questions or chat. And Jeremy here to my left is actually going to be taking those and then passing them on. Um, so a few comments before we get started, for sure. And then we'll kind of open it up for any questions that people have. Uh, man, it's been a crazy week this last week. Um, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, we're all kind of saying the same thing, right? It, it's uh, some combination to how we felt after 9-11 uh, slash, you know, maybe H1N1 slash financial crisis, right? Uh, the weird thing about this, it's kind of like if you have a perfectly sunny day, and that's kind of what we were looking at, right? About a month ago when the market was hitting all-time highs and the economy was doing great and we had record low unemployment. And then all of a sudden, seemingly, at least, just boom, right? We've got this upon us. So, um, yeah, it's definitely unprecedented in some ways, but in other ways, not, right? And, and so if we kind of look back to other things that we've had in the past where there was a lot of uncertainty, to me, you know, I think 9-11 felt a lot like it does now in a way, at least. And, you know, of course, some of you might say, well, it's because the media, right? You know, the media is, you know, kind of causing some of the hysteria. But, you know, the reality, though, is that as far as things being shut down and flights and all that stuff, that's the only time I remember that in any way. Um, it's kind of feeling like, wow, that is really weird um, that, you know, businesses are kind of not operating as usual. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it is one of those things. If, if we fast forward three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, I think we all are saying, you know, what it will have passed, you know, the, the worst of whatever this is will have passed the economic impact of it. That's what we're going to talk about mainly today is not the, the health side of things or, uh, you know, kind of the social implications and all that. You can see plenty of that stuff out there, right? Clearly, we don't need to be the ones telling you that. Uh, but on the financial end of things, um, certainly for those of you who have been paying attention, and it's interesting, we made a lot of phone calls this last week. We called every single client. For a lot of you, we had individual conversations. And for others, we may have left messages and might talk to you this week. And the, the reason why we reached out is we want to be that other voice, right? We, we want to be that other voice out there because we know that overwhelmingly the, the media is negative. And that's not a political statement. It's uh, one that if you look at the ratios of negative to positive news stories, all across the board, not just now, right? Even before this was going on, they thrive on negative information, right? That's just what gets people to watch. And whether you look at conservative media or liberal media or somewhere in between, if there is such a thing, uh, right? You're seeing a lot of negative information out there. So it's not to say that we should bury our heads in the sand, right? And, and not be aware of what's going on. But, uh, you know, it, it's certainly one of those things that we need to be the, the gatekeepers of our own minds, right? And that there's a lot of stuff out there, even when there aren't crazy things like this going on, there's a lot of things out there that we could be consuming and we could be glued to the news 24-7, right? Well, if the ratio is 17 to 1 of negative to positive news stories, and that's just normal, right? Then what's that really doing to our own minds? The more media that we're consuming, the more likely it is that we're going to feel bad about things, right? And, and kind of believe that the world is a terrible place. When in reality, there's a lot of good things going on, um, even despite what's going on right now, right? Businesses having to shut down and disruptions. And, you know, certainly there, it's uh, spurred some creativity, I think, from a lot of people, because certainly life won't be the same again going forward. There's going to be a lot of things that change and don't change back. Um, certainly for people who weren't used to telecommuting or, or doing online learning, well, now they will be. Uh, right. That'll be a, a big, big learning opportunity for a lot of people. So we're going to talk mainly about the, the markets today. Um, certainly the, the markets have been crazy this last week. And it's interesting. We actually had and this was scheduled before. Right. Um, I'm glad that we got it in when we did, because we had a trainer come in on Tuesday from Tony Robbins, who uh, she's actually one of their top trainers at, at Tony Robbins. So uh, we were super blessed to be able to have her come in and, and do some training with our team. And the, the two different areas that we covered together, one of them was handling our emotional state, right? Our, our own psychology, and not just around money, but just around life and everything, right? Because most of what we do is 80% psychology and 20% the tactics, right? The mechanics of things. And that certainly applies to money. Uh, Jeremy and I were also on a call on Friday, and we uh, were on a call with some other financial advisors, some of the top advisors in the country, actually, 
uh, to kind of talk you through how people are speaking with their clients and uh, really how people are reacting to this because you've got two elements here, right? We have these long-term plans and allocations and things that have been designed, um, you know, really to last for the long run. But in the short run, we don't know what's going to happen, right? And we never do, right? Now we especially don't, right? But that's exactly what's reflected in the markets right now is a lot of uncertainty. And that's one thing that we have been able to see, and at least in, in my career over 21 years now, I've been able to see the dot-com crash, 9-11, uh, SARS, H1N1, right? I mean, there's been something about every year. Some things maybe don't have as big of an impact as others, but that's why, if you kind of think about it, the market statistically has a correction about one time a year, right? Which is 10% or more in the market. Then 80% of those never turn into a bear market. They're just a correction and we kind of move on. Uh, clearly, that means the other 20% of the time, which is what we're in right now, the other 20% of the time we go into a bear market, which means that it's indicative of something more severe, right? Something that actually could spur a recession. And of course, some economists are, are saying, hey, this is for sure gonna put us into a recession. Others are actually saying, you know what? It, it's possible because the economic growth has been so strong coming into this, that at least in the US, we might get out of this, um, at least for the calendar year, we might, act, we might actually get out of this and squeak by a, a slight positive increase in GDP. Right now, I, I um, Sure, you say, well, yeah, right. Um, it doesn't seem like that, right? With all businesses basically being impacted and and essentially shutting down, right? Uh, I think that's too strong, right? A lot of businesses are being very creative, including ours, right? As far as how we interact with our clients and how we do business, but you know, certainly there's a possibility that not only will the economy actually rebound, right? That there could be a lot of pent up spending that ends up happening after this is over, which certainly will play out over the next weeks and months. But the other side of things too is that uh, the market, right? The, the market um, had gone way up, right? You might remember this, right? It seems like a long time ago right now, but about a month ago, the market was hitting all time highs and it seemed like, gosh, all the economic news is good, right? And that was kind of our forecast presentation, right? As we were talking about, you know, just all the things that were going on that were good in the world economically. And so that's one thing we can be really grateful for, I think, is that going into this, the economy was actually really strong going into uh, into you know this health stuff, the virus stuff that we've got going on. And so, you know, it, that also could lend itself on the other end of things that we could actually pop back pretty quickly on the other end. And that's what I'm hoping certainly is that the market in the second half of the year uh, will look very different than it does in the first half of the year. So, um, you know, there's been a lot that's happened again in a week in the last week and i'm sure some of the questions that come across again use the chat use the questions features in the um, uh, in the webinar we're not actually going to turn on audio so we won't be able to hear you because uh, that would be really chaotic right now we've got right now uh, looks like 26 people we had 30 something registered by the way we're going to be doing these every monday going forward so uh, we're certainly available here in the office uh, we are open for business even if we end up having to work from home uh, right now we're not but a lot of our clients are choosing to do virtual meetings just so you know we uh, we can certainly jump on the the phone but we can do virtual meetings we've already been equipped for that and have done that a lot actually we have clients all over the country right so it, it doesn't make any difference to us, um, right? We can't shake your hand anyway, right? So you're, you're probably not gonna be, um, uh, you know, missing out on that much. You can still see us, uh, certainly we can communicate. The only thing you'll miss yeah, out on is cookies. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, our cookie supply is, uh, we, we have a lot of cookies, right? Even though the grocery stores may have run out, um, you know, we're still, when this is all over, you can come by, you know, just drop by our office and you can get your cookies and, and coffee. So. But yeah, I did want to go through a couple of things, um, you know, from an a, a, a investor psychology standpoint, one of the speakers on Friday was Daniel Crosby, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Daniel Crosby, and he's actually uh, was was one of the slides in our forecast presentation. I'll go through a couple of things real quick, by the way. Um, this is for the, the attorneys always need to make sure that we get this slide up, right? That Everything we talk about, of course, is just our opinions. It's Jeremy and uh, my opinions. Mm -hmm. And clearly when this presentation was designed, you know, we put this together earlier in the year. A lot's changed since that. But the interesting thing is a lot of things haven't changed either as far as investor psychology and, and what do you actually do, right, when things get tough like this. So, uh, and again, it was interesting. We had the the training with Mandy, our Tony Robbins trainer, and Again, that 80% psychology, 20%, um, you know, the mechanics. 
and you know the different stuff we were learning as far as just kind of controlling our own emotional state uh, but also kind of helping other people through that right different types of personalities but you know where it all becomes useful is during times like this right uh, when everything is great then that stuff is good right the, the trainings and things like that and the theories and all that and we can all smile and nod but when things get crazy this is really where that stuff comes into play this is where it becomes crucial in fact because right now there's a pretty high likelihood that there are people right now that are are reacting to fear and you know that's natural right i think everybody is is a little bit scared right and nervous about gosh this is something none of us have ever seen i don't think anybody has actually seen a a pandemic or one that you know certainly would result in this much disruption in daily life but um, it's one thing to to kind of think about you know how we're how we're uh, basically controlling our own emotions right during times of crisis and I certainly would call uh, this a time of crisis, so at least a, a short-term crisis, right? So anyway, uh, that's the slide. Uh, the forecast slide actually does show you the um, what the attorneys wrote and basically saying, hey, we don't guarantee anything, right? These are just our opinions. So, you know, in our forecast presentation, it was interesting because last year, it was such a strong year, right? Profits were really good, unemployment was low, interest rates were low, inflation was low, just about every economic indicator that we could be looking at was positive, right? And we saw that, right, even between 2018 and 2019, that 2018 did not end well, by the way. The Federal Reserve was pretty tight at that point, and were, they were indicating they were going to actually get tighter. Um, and so they reversed course uh, really at the end of 2018, early 2019, and then everything kind of marched on, right? We ended up having a good year um, economically and, and certainly for the market. And again, other measures too, not just GDP and the market, but also just as far as people's daily lives, when you think about what is the stock market, well, it's, it's people spending money, right? That's the kind of core thing, right? Is people spending money and it creates profits for those businesses. And, and then that's reflected in the stock price. So when it comes to the stock market, the stock market's always trying to figure out, and that's why you're seeing the crazy swings up and down right now, right, is, is a lot of uncertainty. But the stock market's always trying to figure out, so where, where are we going next, right? That's why it's difficult to time the market, right? Because um, the market itself is actually trying to figure out where we're going next. And the market is us, right? The market is all of us because it's all of us, uh, you know, investing money. And, and certainly we may feel like, um, you know, maybe we're not very significant compared to Warren Buffett or something like that. But collectively, you know, it, it's a pretty good indicator of how people feel about things. So with the market volatility that we've seen over the last few weeks, uh, certainly it's an indication that people aren't sure how to feel about things right now. I think more than anything, right? Uh, but more negative than positive when it comes to the impacts that all these companies are going to have from the disruption in their business, their supply chain, and certainly all of us changing how we spend money. Although there will be businesses that end up benefiting from it. Um, you know, certainly you, you think about, we're all joking, right, about toilet paper and, and groceries and things like that. Well, you know, th those companies are, they're selling a lot more than they normally would, right? It's, uh, you know, if you're a dairy farmer, things like that, they're selling a lot more milk than they normally would. Uh, you know, if you're a chicken farmer, you're selling a lot more eggs, right? I think all, all the uh, all the shelves are empty. They're producing about as much as they can uh, right now. So they're all impacted. Um, and then kind of looking at, at the rest of the world, you know, we looked at global stock markets. Most areas were up for last year. But really what I wanted to get into were a couple of things uh, back to Dr. Crosby. When it comes to money decisions, people are not always rational. And sometimes personally, people aren't always rational, right? Again, we're joking about the toilet paper thing. Um, you know, I, I think that's kind of on everybody's minds as well. Why are people doing that, right? Well, it's not rational, right? Mm -hmm. When people get scared, especially if they get panicked, a lot of times people do things that it may not really make any logical sense to do it, but that's because they're not using their logical mind, right? They're using their emotional mind. And, uh, you know, that can sometimes lead us the wrong direction, especially when it comes to finance. Uh, that's, uh, they, they say that it's actually, I think it's the number one reason for divorce, right? Among mm -hmm. married couples is actually because of financial stuff. Yep. So it's it's a highly charged emotional thing. We have a lot of engineers as clients, right? And so you would think that, uh, well, no, it's this completely rational thing. It's just math, right? No, it's, it's not. And this is exactly where Jeremy and I, you know, we're earning our money for sure um, during times like this when things are in a crisis. So um, one thing I, I kind of thought about, I was at a, a finance conference actually with some of the top finance experts in the, the world actually about a month ago. It's hard to believe that it's already been that quickly. Um, the time has passed. 
but and they don't know either, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, Warren Buffett and Ray Daly, all the, the people that are managing the biggest pots of money and everything, they don't know either, right? So um, it should at least make you feel good right now that it's not like, well, you missed something, right? Like if there was some information that you should have acted on. So that makes us feel a little bit better too. But um, really, you know, the one thing that they had mentioned is just that the economy was was very strong at the time. And so we should have a bigger chunk of time here before a sustained downturn, a sustained recession. So that was one thing that maybe feel you know good, certainly as far as client portfolios, at least the growth part of people's portfolios. And you always should have a protection part of your portfolio, um, certainly. And in, in our podcast, um, timely, you know, it's going to be starting here pretty quickly. It's called Wiser Financial Advisor. So a lot of the stuff we talk about in there is going to apply very much to what's happening now and, and making sure you're prepared for times like this certainly with your personal finances. But um, yeah, the, and then da Daniel Crosby, again, Dr. Crosby, he's written a lot of books and things which probably, um, you know, most people wouldn't think are very interesting because he's an academic, right? But he, he's actually, uh, he was on the call, you know, again on yeah. Friday. And, um, you know, again, it's a lot of psychology, a lot of just people's fears and things that are going on right now. And, you know, his quote here, the fact that people are fallible is your biggest enduring advantage in the accumulation of greater wealth. The fact that you are just as fallible is the biggest impediment to that very same goal. And this is really what I wanted to center on today was just, you know, really stopping for a second. And for those of us who have been glued, and I, I did this myself over the weekend, that I was not in the best state on Saturday because I, I was kind of glued to media. And the more that I was consuming it, the worse mood I was in, really. I, I was not in a great mood. And things didn't seem fantastic. And, you know, I, so I cut myself off of that and I had a great Sunday, right? The sun came out and, you know, took the dog for a walk and things, life kind of went on um, because, you know, really, again, we do need to act as the gatekeeper to our own minds. So, um, you know, the, the fact that, you know, it's a choice, right? Us getting on social media, us getting on the TV, the internet, whatever it is that you do, even the newspaper, that's a choice. You know, we all choose to consume that information and so we do need to be the gatekeepers of our own mind, um, or we could end up succumbing to what Dr. Crosby is saying here is the fact that when other people are selling, when there's always buyers and sellers, right? So when people are selling, guess who is buying? Well, people like Warren Buffett. And I just read, I think it was last week that he's buying a bunch of Delta Airlines mm -hmm. stock, which some people might think, what? Like, you're crazy. Why would he be buying airline stocks? Well, he's pretty smart. He's 89 years old, but he's still pretty sharp and one of the most successful investors of all time. And Buffett has mentioned that too, is that about once a decade or so, uh, about once a decade, the market goes on a big sale. You know, there's different reasons for it. And this one, uh, we know, right? We, we know kind of what's going on and how disruptive it is, at least temporarily to uh, to the world. But the fact that every decade or so, there's a big sale. And he said, that's when we'll be uh, buying extra. We'll certainly be buying extra shares because those shares have suddenly become very cheap for companies that are actually solid, good companies that we know are going to be flexible enough and resourceful enough to get through what's going on right now. Even, you know, cruise lines, I saw, at least as of this morning, cruise line stocks were way up, right? Um, so you might think, well, what? And that's crazy. They've all canceled, like, their cruises for the next month. Well, they're clearly, though, uh, they, if they're smart, if they're good businesses, they've planned for things like this. And if they haven't, there are businesses that won't make it, right? And that's not to, um, you know, to be critical of anybody's business or, or somebody who will have a hardship, but this is really where the rubber hits the road, right? And businesses that, that weren't built for downturns, they, they weren't built to be able to get through this. It's kind of like winter time, right? And this is winter, right? You've, you've heard me use that example before where you've got the different seasons of the year economically and in the market. And clearly we've just gone into winter very suddenly, you know, it's, and sometimes it happens in Colorado, we go into winter very suddenly, it's like really sunny and we go right into it. So that's kind of where we are right now. But, you know, trees, plants, things like that, the stuff that makes it through the winter is the strongest stuff, right? And they, they say actually that uh, people that are, um, you know, into that stuff, right, gardeners, things like that, they, they say that actually is what makes things stronger, right, is actually going through winter. And I know we will economically, certainly if this turns into a recession, certainly it's turned into a bear market, um, at least for the time being. But is it going to be one of those situations that it lasts for years, like the financial crisis? I don't think so. I, I, I just don't see that happening. Um, 
is it going to, are we going to recover as fast as we went down? Probably not, right? I mean, it was 19 trading days, something like that for mm -hmm. us to go from a bull market to a bear market. That's pretty quick. And, and that's, you know, there have been other markets where we've seen it happen faster historically, but it's one of those things that it, as there, there are two things, I was listening to JP Morgan this morning and they said that there are basically two things that are going to kind of calm the markets down and get us back to normal is number one, certainly, you know, the health side of things is that there'll have to be some statistics that the cases have peaked and started going down. Um, hopefully at that point, we'll all realize, all right, well, that was the worst of it, right? And certainly, hopefully some of the measures that have been taken, uh, you know, to, to kind of, uh, you know, all the things that we're doing, social distancing, right? Hopefully those are the things that are actually gonna help, uh, help spread it out and help the impact not be as bad on people as individuals. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those situations that we, we can't control that part of it. That's completely outside of our control other than how we're behaving on a day-to-day -day basis. But the second thing, and this is where it seems like almost day, every day, right? We're seeing something from the Fed, something from the, um, you know, the president, the Congress, uh, right? Is that there's monetary policy and certainly the Fed is acting as, about as aggressively as they possibly can. They've lowered rates to zero now, which we haven't seen here for a, a while, a number of years since they had rates at zero after the financial crisis. They've also ramped up quantitative easing, which means printing a lot of money, adding a lot of liquidity to the market. So um, certainly that can help, you know, as far as stemming off deflation and, you know, any type of, um, of um, you know, dislocation in the markets. They, they basically don't want this to turn into a financial crisis on top of what's already going on. Good news too is the banks are pretty well capitalized going into this. So, uh, but again, the other side of things that which isn't quite so easy, right? Because we're a democracy and you've got some checks and balances is the fiscal side of things. I think, you know, that's what I'm hearing is that the uh, the markets basically and, and individuals are looking for more action even than the already has already been taken. So there's already been legislation that's been passed and more to be coming. Uh, certainly we saw that after the financial crisis is a number of different pieces of legislation. Some of it was put together and passed very quickly and hopefully that's what we'll end up seeing right now. But certainly it's it's a situation where you know, the government does step in, the government does step in and it ends up you know, breeding some confidence and certainly hopefully acts as a buffer for those that are directly impacted by this. So the other thing I, I did want to mention too is that this, this isn't just the coronavirus. Some people um, don't realize that there's also been an attack on our oil markets um, by Russia. And so, so those of you who uh, saw some of the market volatility last week, it wasn't just the virus. Uh, the, the other side of it is that Russia's flooded the market with oil and made it pretty clear that um, they, they they haven't really uh, hit it very much. In other words, they're trying to, to bankrupt mm -hmm. a lot of our energy companies and they're probably going to be successful, unfortunately. Um, so certainly that sector has gotten hit pretty hard. Um, you've seen oil prices drop way down and, and certainly energy companies have already announced that uh, they're going to be shutting down wells, shutting down exploration, things like that. So that's the other thing at play right now is that Russia is taking advantage of the situation. So this is not just a uh, a virus. It's not just a health issue. It's also an economic attack that we're under right now. Um, and that may not be the worst of them. So just uh, being fully transparent, there's a lot of uh, stuff at play right now. And, and that's really what the market is trying to absorb is what does all this mean? And really, if you think about it, the market at any given millisecond, right, as things are trading is collectively everybody trying to figure out what does all this mean? And what is all this going to mean for the future? So that's why you see these crazy swings up and down and up and down because there's so much uncertainty about both of those things, right? The, the fiscal policy, we've gotten some pretty good transparency on the monetary policy. And again, the Fed is, has acted pretty aggressively here. Um, a little bit less so on fiscal policy, although this is one of those rare times that it, it looks like Congress and the president are actually gonna get along for a little while and, and get some stuff passed. Um, so we've seen some of that. But also, again, it is going to take some time, it sounds like, for this thing to peak, um, no matter what we do, right, as far as staying home from school and work and everything like that, um, you know, it's going to take some time. So this will be measured in, certainly some of it will be measured in days, but more likely weeks and months that this is going to play out. The one thing I, I did want to throw out before we open it up for questions is that if you imagine yourself back where you were at 9/11, if you imagine where yourself you where you were back during the financial crisis, 
or or pick your own crisis, right? Some of you might remember uh, Black Monday, right? Back in 1987, which I was 12 or something, right? <laughs> Back then, so I wasn't thinking about the stock market, but the market dropped over 20% in one day. That's crazy, mm -hmm. it's never happened before. Um, you know, we didn't even come close last week, right? To a 20% drop in one day, as volatile as things were. And not to say that it's over, right? We, we may end up seeing that before the end, but there have been other bad times, certainly. There, there have been some really ugly times and some that have been a long uh, drawn out process. For those of you who remember the 70s, the 70s were a horrible decade economically and for the markets. Uh, basically, you would have, as a stock investor, you would have made nothing during that decade. Um, inflation was crazy. You probably remember if you were had a mortgage or car loan or something back then, how high the interest rates were. Or if you had money in CDs, you probably remember, yeah, that was awesome. You know, we had 12% CDs. So now it wasn't so awesome when you're going to the grocery store and paying, you know, expo exponential amounts for milk and bread and yeah, things like that. So, but we've been through tough times before. And that's the one thing I, I think is really important is just to kind of put yourself back in those places during some really rough times. And then, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting when we kind of go back and see some of those retrospectives, right, of what happened during certain years. Some of the stuff was really bad, right? I mean, some of the stuff caused a lot of market volatility and some of it may have personally impacted a lot of us. But then, you know, everybody does move on, right? The world figures it out and we move on. And that is what's going to happen here. Um, again, it's my opinions, right? The, the slide before, I can't guarantee you anything, right? But every time that this country has ever experienced anything tough, we figured it out and we moved on. And so that's really what's happening right now is the figuring out, right? Everybody's not sure where things are going and really how to react, but it is a new normal, right? It's a new normal that will set in as far as how we interact with each other for a while. And then there will be a time when things start to get back to normal, um, right? Businesses will start to get back to normal and you know our day-to-day -day lives will get back to normal. But again, that's going to happen over weeks and months. That's not going to be a really short-term fix. So again, before we open it up for questions, I do want to just throw out the fact that this is something that it may have happened very quickly. Um, certainly, again, this last week was very much a roller coaster as new information was coming out. And um, so it, it happened very quickly, but it will not undo itself very quickly. It won't undo itself that quickly, in other words. Um, until those two things happen, until we get more clarity from a fiscal standpoint. But also, even if we got a lot of clarity from a fiscal standpoint, we don't know how this is going to play out, right, for our own personal lives. Uh, certainly some people who will be impacted directly. You know, I'm happy uh, in the sense that I know people, right, that are, um, uh, you know, have respiratory issues and are elderly, things like that. So it, it does make me happy for them. I mean, that, that we're doing all that we can at this point to keep them from getting impacted by this. But really, until that plays itself out over the next few weeks, hopefully, right, hopefully it'll end up being a, a fairly quick thing. And at least in this case, we do have versus H1N1, actually, the swine flu actually started here, um, you know, when that came out back in 2009, 2010. This one started in China and certainly is hitting Europe in a big way. And so we've, we do have at least something to go on, right, as far as how long it took for things to get settled down how people are being impacted. And I think some of the aggressive action, certainly with canceling NBA stuff and NCAA and March Madness, I mean, all the things that we would be doing right now, um, you know, my hope is that, you know, that was was done in, um, you know, in, in a loving way, in a good way that will actually end up keeping this from getting worse and keeping it from getting worse than it would have needed to be. So um, with that in mind, we'll open it up for questions here. Um, again, we'll be doing this every Monday, by the way, and this is being recorded. Uh, we have to run it through compliance before we can uh, actually publish it. So hopefully they'll be quick about getting, uh, getting that back to us. But I did wanna throw out to you just that we are gonna be doing this every Monday until things settle down. And my guess is that's not gonna be short term. That's actually gonna take some time, again, over bare minimum weeks and you know, very well could be months that we end up doing this. Um, so we definitely want to be here, be here as a resource. We also want to be here as a resource for people that need help. And I think that's one of the, the coolest things that happens whenever there's a crisis. Uh, you guys remember it wasn't that long ago, right? We had the floods right um, mm -hmm. here, um, you know, that a lot of people got impacted by uh, certainly 9-11, um, you know, there's Katrina, there's a lot of kind of disasters that have happened. And although it's very destructive and impacts a lot of people and, and some people lose their lives, but one of the coolest things that come out of it is that, you know, people's kind of sense of contribution and that people come together and help each other. 
And before this is done, and uh, you know, I was talking to uh, Dr. Jonathan at, or not Dr. Jonathan, Pastor Jonathan at uh, Res Church over the weekend, and he was asking, is it, you know, do I know anybody? Do I know anybody at UC Health that's high, high enough up that they would be able to, um, you know, see how the church could help? It's one of the biggest churches here in Northern Colorado. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. You know, they stepped up and said, what can we do? Basically, what can we do to help? And I think a lot of you are in that situation, too. Certainly at Keystone, we want to do that. Um, use our skills to the best that we can. And I think financially, there are going to be people that go through a hardship, right? And we don't care how much money they've got. Um, Jeremy and I are happy to talk to them if they've lost a job, if their wages are down, if they're, if they're just worried, right, about what's going on and they need somebody to talk to for a little bit. We'll make ourselves available as much as possible through this to be able to kind of talk people through that, um, you know, so we definitely throw that out to your friends, uh, your family, other people that might be impacted. But yeah, I'd be Res Church kind of stepping in and say, what can we do to help? Um, it'll be interesting to see that partnership, right, and how they can best support the nurses and doctors and and people, uh, many of which are our clients. We, we've got a lot of people at UC Health actually in Banner that um, will be on the front lines of this thing as we go forward. So, you know, that's one thing, again, being the gatekeeper of your own mind, um, extremely important and, and us too, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're hearing this stuff every day, but, you know, being the gatekeepers of our own minds and, and having some hope for the future of knowing that this will not last forever. It will be one of those things that we get past and we'll be stronger for it as unpleasant as it is going through the experience. So, um, yeah, again, we're, we're definitely here for you. We're here mm -hmm. for your family, friends, coworkers. Um, just want to make sure that, that that's out there and we also want to be, uh, you know, a place that people can come for resources, even if it's just connecting people to the right, uh, the right charities, things like that, that would be able to help out. So, uh, with that in mind, what questions do we have? Um, we got a couple. I want yeah, uh, a couple of quick things here for me as well. Um, is that uh, Josh really was on this on top of this as well? But I wanted to reiterate, it's it's perfectly okay to feel cautious or a little bit nervous right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, you that's a human response, and that's okay. Uh, what we want you to remember, though, is that, you know, we're here in case you do have those questions. We don't want you stewing about them or making things worse. If you have a question and it's something worried about, even if you may think it's silly or whatever it is, please feel free to call us. Mm -hmm. We would yeah. much rather have that conversation with you now than let that stew for a week or two and get a lot worse. Um, but remember, Josh also said, you know, the fundamentals of the economy six weeks ago, you know, if someone were in six weeks ago to say, you know what? Over the next month and a half, um, half the market's going to lose, you know, the market's going to use 20, 30 percent of its value. Mm -hmm. You know, fundamentally, is Microsoft worth 30 percent less than it was six weeks ago? Probably, Probably not. not. No. Right. Yeah, so a company like that, that um, <laughs> I guess, you know, they have devices. Right? We've got surfaces here that I guess mm -hmm. we can still order them. They can be delivered to our house. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yes, and, and we, it's, it's not the first time we've seen a virus or something like this, uh, but it is always very uncomfortable. And so we just want to recognize your uncomfort um, and let you know that is natural, but we are here to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, the first question that we had, again, was about the circuit breakers um, that we have built into the market mm -hmm. and what those are and how they work. And so um, a quick and dirty on that is that uh, from the like Josh was saying back in 1987 when the market dropped over 20 percent in one day that stemmed the SEC to come up with a couple of rules to basically just kind of put the brakes on a situation like that okay yeah. and so what it is is there's three tiers um, of what can happen here uh, a couple of them that we've seen uh, so far and so uh, a level one tier is if the market overall drops by seven percent um, in a single trading day uh, then they just basically freeze trading for 15 minutes. Say, okay, everybody take a breath, relax, let's think about this. After 15 minutes, they start it back up. If it drops to 13% um, level two, then they will do it again and they'll stop it for 15 minutes and they'll say, okay, for real this time, everybody take a breath, mm -hmm. just relax, we're going to get this worked out. If it happens to get to another 20%, level three in the final level, if it hits a 20% drop in a single trading day, they will literally shut down Wall Street for the day. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, okay, we're just gonna, this is ridiculous, we're gonna stop this, everybody needs to calm down, and we'll pick it back up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how those actually work. Um, to my knowledge, level one and two 
Um, we've definitely seen level one mm -hmm. past week. I think it actually happened again this morning. Yeah. Uh, just with futures and everything where they were. So uh, we do see those, but that's basically how they work so that you know what those are yeah. built in for. Yeah, one thing to differentiate, thank you um, mm -hmm. for explaining that. One thing to differentiate though too, and again, I'm just being you know, very open, right, is the fact that when we've had major crises in the past, uh, it's not unusual for the market to go down by 50% or even more. We were down 58% from the top to the bottom in the financial crisis. So uh, the trick is, and so some people say, well, why wouldn't we just get out, right? Go to cash or something like that until things get better uh, because it doesn't work, number one. Uh, the timing does not work statistically. It's extremely against you to do that mm -hmm. um, as far as not only when to get out, but when to get back in. And I remember back in the financial crisis, there were people that I knew that actually cashed out and said, hey, we're going to go to cash until, again, things get better. And the trick is, is that, you know, sometimes it doesn't look like things are better for quite some time. And some of those people that cashed out when the Dow was at about 6,600 or so at its bottom point, when did they get back in? Never. I mean, some of them never got back in. And so they never experienced this jump. You know, where are we at now? 21,000, 20,000, something like 21. that. 21. Yeah, yeah, 20. Yeah, depending on you know, when we look, look, right? Yeah, I don't know yeah. what's happened in so, the last 30 um, minutes. <laughs> so, you know, we went from that point, the financial crisis, uh, you know, where even at these levels, right, the market has tripled, certainly from where it was at. But those people either never got back in or before the, the Dow started dropping, by the way, October 2007 was when it peaked and the Dow was at about 13,000, give or take at that point. So it, it dropped about half, you know, from top to bottom. And so people may have you know, lost, at least on paper, they may have lost half of their value. But uh, some of those people, they ended up cashing out after their account had lost value by that much. One thing to, to differentiate too, remember what we all own, and we're in the same boat, right? Jeremy and I have the same thing, mm -hmm. is that we own shares. We don't own dollars, we own shares. And those shares, nobody's taking those away from you. So uh, those shares change in value from a day-to-day -day basis, which just represents that if you were to buy more, that would be the price you would buy in at. And if you were to sell, that would be the price that you would sell at. So nobody's forcing anybody to sell right now, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things that, um, I like to use airplane analogies, right? Because sometimes I, I used to be scared of turbulence, by the way, years ago, I, I used to think that was a scary thing, like in, uh, when I was younger. So now it doesn't bother me, right? Because, uh, you know, I've experienced a lot of it. I've been on a lot of flights and so it's, it's no big deal. I also have a couple uh, friends that are pilots and that helped too, actually kind of talking through it. It's like, well, when things get really turbulent and, you know, they've, they've told me, yeah, it's, it's just happens, right? And there's not really what, what you can do about it. And planes don't crash because of turbulence. Um, so, you know, can people get panicky? Sure. Uh, interesting thing earlier in my career, though, this is probably back when I was a little bit more nervous about, uh, you know, being on airplanes and turbulence and things. This is probably 20, 20 plus years ago. But I remember I used to work for a company based in Omaha and, uh, I was with a couple of coworkers on the plane and uh, actually I, I fell asleep. It's a quick flight, but I fell asleep and woke up, you know, right, right after we touched down and everybody was talking about, oh my gosh, it was so turbulent. Like there was those thunderstorms and the lightning and everything like that. And I was like, okay, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't experience it, right? It wasn't something that I even saw. So again, be, being careful about how much media that we're consuming right now. And one client said it best when we were talking uh, last week is, that um, she said, you know what, we're just not gonna look at our account for six months. I thought that was actually really smart. Yeah. I mean, it's really wise actually, is that, you know, she's just not gonna look at it. You know, it's, it's something that she doesn't need all that money right now. And what good would it really do, right? It probably would just raise her anxiety level. And actually Dr. Crosby is in his studies and, and things he's actually uh, in his research, he's actually uh, shown that the more often people check their accounts, the more people watch the market, the more likely they are to, to trade, right? Well, we know uh, historically the average investor does really poorly because they tend to uh, buy low and sell high. Unfortunately not. The average investor actually does the opposite because they get really scared when something like this happens and they end up selling when prices are cheap and they don't want to buy back in until prices are expensive. So and we can all, again, use the logical side of our minds and say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that, right? Because people get scared. It's the same reason why people were buying all the toilet paper on their shelves and buying way more milk than they normally buy. 
doesn't necessarily logically make sense, but they're really scared, right? And it's a sense of control that they might have in, in doing that. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things just to be careful. It's, it's important to be careful on the other end too, on the greed end of things, because again, a lot of those people that are selling out right now and, and not our clients necessarily, we have not had you know, a bunch of people panic out or something like that. But the average person out there that's left to their own devices, they were probably wanting to buy into the market, you know, a month, two, six months ago because they didn't want to miss out. They wanted to get all the gains of the, the market because they saw their friends or whoever, right, making all this money. Well, those same people are selling right now because they're scared. And again, logically, we can say, well, that makes no sense. Why would you buy high and sell low? But that is what the average investor does because of that psychology end of things, that emotional side of things, that 80% of their emotional brain that's just our survival mechanism, right? Is that when we're scared of something, we want to avoid it. And so that's why a lot of people do end up making a big mistake in selling out. Now, again, one thing I do want to emphasize is that we don't know. Again, the, at the uh, conference I was at a month ago, Ray Dalio, who's the uh, manages the biggest hedge fund in the world, uh, Paul Tudor Jones, who is considered to be in the top five traders of all time, uh, was there speaking. They didn't know either. And coronavirus was a thing, right? It was even a topic of conversation that came up at the time. They didn't know this was going to happen, right? So again, that should make you feel a little bit better. Um, so what, what else do we have for questions? Um, so, we have yeah. kind of centering on a couple of topics here, but um, um, one, you advise us to just hold steady with investments, mm -hmm. um, run yeah. the course, but with the market continuing to decline, is that still the best advice for retirees? Mm. Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, as tempting as it may be to do something drastic, and actually I'll pop onto another slide here, as far as when does it make sense to change our asset allocation, our portfolios? Mm -hmm. Well, any of these bullet points. So your goals have changed. For most people, you know, that hasn't changed, right, because of this. Your risk tolerance has changed. Uh, a lot of people would raise their hand on that one and say, yep, yep, it did. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm not comfortable. Um, and, you know, the other flight that I was on coming back from my conference, the pilot actually said that. He actually said, when we first got up in the air, he said, you know what, I'm actually going to have the flight attendants. It wasn't a very long flight, but I'm actually going to have the flight attendants stay in their seats for the whole flight. Uh, so no service. Sorry about that. Um, and then actually kind of coming into Denver as we were headed over the mountains, he actually came on again and he said, uh, so folks, you know, I'm actually asking everybody to stay in their seats. Uh, we're, we've got some severe turbulence coming up, you know, reports from other aircraft. And you don't hear that word very often, you know, severe turbulence, really? Uh, so, and he was right, you know, about a minute later, it, it kind of felt like if I had a toy airplane sitting here right now and I just started shaking it like this, it was, you know, there were a couple of people that are actually freaking out a little bit, right? The guy next to me said, this can't be safe. And, you know, I... I, I didn't really react to it. Um, you know, clearly it was safe, right? We landed and everything was fine. But, you know, for a lot of people, even people that were very calm and usually fly all the time, stuff like that, that could really unnerve them. So, um, you know, the, the tricky part of this is that, uh, you know, some of the most dangerous words in the investment world is this time it's different. And although factually that's actually true, right? That we could say, well, you know, this time is different, you know, because of X, and Y, and Z and the virus and this and that. And you know, every business is shutting down and that's gonna have an economic impact. Well, clearly, right? That's why the market has reacted the way it has and why it's off you know, 30%, something like that at this point, right? Um, two things. So number one, um, so it's a bear market, we're in a bear market. And if you were in the bear market um, and experienced the down, you definitely wanna be in the market and experience the bull that's gonna surely happen on the other side of this. Um, and that's one thing that we can say with confidence is that 100% of the time after every bear market of all time, there's been a bull market. And so we definitely want to make sure that we're participating in that. My belief, I don't know for sure, right? But, uh, you know, my belief, just observing markets and, and uh, behavior and things over time is that this is going to pass again. Um, so replacing fear with faith, right? It, it does require faith to believe that, hey, this is going to pass. And you know it, we're going to peak, and people are going to be impacted, and people are going to die. I mean, just the reality of it, right? But uh, there will also be good things that come from it. 
in that I think we're going to get a heck of a lot better at responding to stuff like this because this surely isn't the last disease that um, or uh, virus that's going to impact the world. And there have been far deadlier viruses as far as percentages in the past. So if you kind of imagine, well, instead of the percentages that we're hearing right now, and which nobody will know for sure, right, until it's well past what the real percentages were um, as far as fatality rates. But what if it was like Ebola or something like that? What, what if this was like one that it was like a 50% death rate or something like that? Um, you know, and we had no practice. This essentially is is almost like a practice for us to get a heck of a lot better at responding to things like this. So there will be good things. Businesses, the, well, the ones that kind of make it through this will be much stronger as, as a result. And for those of us who have long-term uh, goals and we've got a long-term mindset in play, our uh, our own psychology is gonna be stronger. Certainly coming out of this as, as investors will be kind of accustomed to things like this even more, kind of like, uh, you know, somebody who's flown a bunch and experienced a bunch of turbulence, even some severe turbulence, is that once they've experienced that for a while, and that was a lot of the comments actually that we got talking to clients, I would say 90% of the people I talked to at least last week were not all that concerned, really. They, they were more concerned for, um, you know, just themselves kind of personally and their health and, you know, they've got a family member, you know, those sorts of things, not really about the money end of the, the financial mm -hmm. end of things. Um, and, you know, most often the, the comment back from them is, well, we've been through stuff like this before. We've been through bad markets. We know that the right decision is to stick with the asset allocation, stick with the plan, do some thoughtful rebalancing, which we, we will certainly be doing along the way. Um, but the way that our clients, many of which have been with us for 20 years here at Keystone, uh, you know, I've been through markets. They've been through some severe bear markets, even where the market was well down, down well more than half in the end. So I can tell you from experience and from statistics that trying to, to make a big tactical move right now, um, even if you get the first decision right. So let's say that somebody sold right now and went to cash or they went really conservative, which you know, more or less would be you know, similar. Um, so they sold when prices were low. Well, what if they get lower? Right. I think that's maybe the concern and the questions that are coming out is what if prices go lower than they do. Right. And, and sometimes they do. Right. And, and that's kind of what was happening in the financial crisis is that the market went down and then it went down more and then it went down more. And then the final kind of gasp of the bear market was March of 2009 when. Uh, the, again, the Dow hit about 6,600 or so, and then that was it, right? And then things went up. And 2003 actually was a great market year, and uh, or, or 2009 actually. I was thinking of um, the bear market before that, the big one uh, after the dot com crash and 9/11 and so forth. But uh, you know that was when, when things bottomed out, and then prices started going back up. My hope, just because this is very situational, and not to minimize impact on on people's uh, health or business or anything, but my thought is that you know going into this economically strong, they're probably J.P. Morgan probably is is right on this in that there's going to be some pent up spending that ends up happening after this is over. Which uh, again, there's no no way to tell where the bottom is, right? It could be sometime in the next few weeks. It might last longer than that. But uh, you want to be here for the bull too, right? If, if you're down 30% and uh, you know, our clients have asset allocation, right? We're probably not 100% stocks. So you have bonds and things that have actually gone up in value more than likely. But if you've been in it for the bear, you want to be in it for the bull too. And um, that being said, we don't know where the bottom is. I wish we did, uh, but neither does anybody else know that. So it, it could be that the Dow, and this is what you need to prepare yourself. This is the 80% psychology, right? So going into this, so this maybe comes into some application, right? As far as what, what do we do about this, right? So uh, for the most part, sticking with asset allocation, um, again, unless some of these other things apply, rebalancing, again, we're going to be doing that for you. That's not something that you need to even be thinking about, right? Um, fundamentals, I don't think really have changed in the standpoint that we know a lot of economic data was strong coming into this. But with regard to kind of what's happening now, impact on businesses now, well, that, that's what the market's trying to price in, right? So we might have the Dow bottom at 20,000, 18,000, 15,000, right? It might go down by half or even more by the time this is done. So I think it's just important that we all prepare for that right now. Uh, my hope is that we don't get anywhere close to that, right? It, and I don't think so, but I don't know that, right? 
um, and neither does anybody else know. But what do we do? We, we rebalance, certainly, um, sticking with our S allocation when possible, we do, we do rebalancing. It, it's interesting, I'd say half of the calls we've gotten from people this last week are people who want to buy. Um, so that's an indication too, right, is that there are people that see this as an opportunity and you know they're chiming in with Warren Buffett, right, and say, hey, this is something that doesn't come up very often. It's a great opportunity to buy. Um, other clients that have actually contacted us too, or, or when we called them, they said, you know what, um, if things are down right now, I don't really want to be taking any money out of my portfolio. So I want you to turn off my withdrawals for a period of time, for three months or you know, whatever they, they could do. Other people have said, hey, I want to reduce my withdrawals because you know, we remember that principle that you and Jeremy taught us that you really don't want to take out more than four to five percent per year. Well, if, if your asset value is down right now, then we want to apply that four to five percent of that value, um, right, because we need to adjust temporarily. And, and this is where, you know, this is, uh, you know, kind of like a forest fire, right? Kind of like the fires in Australia or California that that's the tough part is sometimes they, they burn for a while and sometimes people actually start to lose hope, right? That it's going to get any better. But the reality is, is the state of California did not completely burn, right? Uh, the fires were bad and they certainly burned down homes and impacted people. But in the end, uh, again, everybody figured it out and they moved on despite any destruction that happened. So it doesn't last forever. And I, I think it's important to just remember that, that there is another side of this, that things will improve on the other end. There probably is going to be some pent up spending that happens. Uh, some economists are actually calling for that, that that's why GDP could be positive by the end of the year or the market even could be positive by the end of the year is that a lot of that pent up spending and business activity, right, that would have been happening right now, um, that, you know, fundamentally, a lot of people aren't going to lose their jobs. There, there's a lot of businesses that will survive. A lot of that will kind of release at the end of the year, and that can actually uh, actually result in some makeup for what we're experiencing right now. Yeah. Um, you kind of touched yeah. on it recently, yeah. but a lot we have a lot of questions uh, from our clients regarding uh, current rebalancing, uh, you know, is, are we taking any advantage of any of this stuff? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, also, one I'll address really quick yeah. is uh, the uh, trade notifications. Um, so, yes, there are, I think we can sum up pretty much all of these in the fact that, yeah. um, yes, there are trades happening. Josh mentioned this. There is rebalancing happening mm -hmm. uh, within those accounts all the time, yeah. uh, especially times like these when we see big drops in this. Uh, we see, you know, um, bond prices uh, start to rise. And so that part of your asset allocation gets uh, out of balance on the high side. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll do is we'll trim that off, take advantage of those high increases, and then buy back in on the stocks to put that al asset allocation back into uh, balance there. So yeah. those are happening right now. Um, are we making any major changes inside any of these things? Mm -hmm. um, not typically, literally just about everything is down right now. So mm -hmm. um, not to say that it couldn't, if there's a fundamental reason why we should be making a trade on a specific company or something mm -hmm. like that, we absolutely will. Um, and then, so the reason why you probably haven't seen a whole lot of uh, trade emails coming out mm -hmm. it's not that the trades aren't happening is that the trade desk is severely overworked right now and so i don't think they have time to literally write down this is what we did and this is why yeah, and there'll be some pent up uh, you'll, you'll probably yeah. get a, a chunk of them when they come out yep, yeah absolutely because yeah, you yeah you definitely you want to let those people do what they do best uh, which is trade um yeah the the um yeah, the communication is important but yeah that's probably not the highest priority yep absolutely so uh but the trades are happening um uh, another uh, one on that is you know are we using any kind of leverage um for things like that uh you know again rebalancing taking taking uh, taking the stuff that is doing good right now and trimming it off the top and putting it into the stuff that's at a severe discount so by all means um are we going out and using margin to buy a bunch of leverage accounts no that's no not very yeah, fiduciary but responsible as, as tempting as that might be and that's kind of the opposite thing too is mm -hmm. that, again we've been getting uh, you know calls and, and you know most of them have been outbound calls by the way sometimes you know, when we're talking to people they say oh my gosh you guys must be getting a million calls and emails and stuff believe it or not not really uh, most of our clients are um seem pretty calm about the whole thing as as crazy as this might seem right now they've, they've actually been pretty calm so maybe it's because we've been doing these q a's right and, and people know they have a, a way to communicate with us but 
I really haven't gotten that much inbound communication. So, mm -hmm. but it would be a mistake, I think, um, you know, sticking with asset allocation, having that discipline. The discipline, discipline is only needed when things are hard. Um, you know, when things aren't hard, then discipline isn't necessarily needed, right? Right now is where kind of the rubber hits the road. And the fact that all of you, all of our clients, we've spent time talking about risk and the returns that you need and so forth in your portfolio. So everything has been pretty thoughtfully designed uh, going into this. So it's not to say that you won't be impacted, right? We're, we're not market timers and neither is Warren Buffett or anybody else has been able to do it consistently. But just keep that in mind that this is part of a long-term plan and something that's meant to play itself out over not just days and weeks like we're experiencing right now, but years. And I think the clients that that had that perspective, like the, the client that she said, I'm just not going to look at anything for six months. That's not a bad perspective, really, because I think for most people, most people think this is going to be over well before six months, right? The yeah. the virus stuff will have kind of run its course everywhere, right? I, I think everybody will have been impacted in some way, but uh, six months from right now, it's likely to be completely kind of off the radar, right? As far as the virus itself, it'll just be the um, you know, the economic activity that kind of starts back up and companies gain back to normal, businesses back to normal, us as individuals back to normal. Uh, I think personally that that's going to happen well before six months. But, you know, kind of like the the pilot, you know, to, talking about turbulence, it's it's one of those things that, you know, I, I just would expect a lot more. I would not expect this to end in days, maybe not even in weeks. This may play itself out over months. That's what we're planning on continuing to do the Q&A. Um, I would not uh, make the other mistake if, of this. Again, the greed side of things could be, well, we should just go all in, right, and buy the market while it's cheap. I don't know that I would do that either, right? Let's say that you, that you had a, a portfolio that was designed roughly with half of it in more secure places like bonds and half of it in, in stock places, right, that are experiencing a lot of the volatility. By the way, most of the bonds have probably gone up in value mm -hmm. while stocks have gone down. Um, so that's one thing to, to just consider that if you're diversified, you probably have exposure to different areas. But um, yeah, so I, I, I guess it's, as far as just having the discipline to be able to stick with that and not being the person that says, well, let's just take all the bonds and buy all stocks with it and they will be 100% stocks. I don't know if that's a good idea because remember what I just said is nobody knows the bottom, right? The Dow may bottom at 20 and my, maybe today's the bottom. We don't know, right? Um, maybe it's next week. Maybe the bottom is 15,000, 14,000. Nobody has any idea. Again, I, I think it's just really important to have that psychology going into this that it's a, a short-term thing that we're going through fundamentally. Um, making a big move right now probably wouldn't make a lot of sense either way. Now, for people who have cash, sometimes people were asking that is they, they say, and this is a sweet spot to be in, right, if you've got cash, is that, well, how do we take advantage of this? Part of it's rebalancing, you know, we'll be doing that in portfolios, but you know, how do I take advantage of this with cash? Or maybe it's not even you, maybe it's your kid or something like that, that, you know, they kind of had a, ca a bunch of cash built up and, or maybe just cash coming in from their, their job or their business or something like that is now a good time to invest. Well, it's a lot better than it was a month ago, right? I mean, prices, if, if prices are on sale 30% off right now, you know, it's kind of like going to the grocery store. If, if you, uh, of course, right now the grocery store is weird, right? But let's say that the, uh, you go to the store and you've got you know, a bunch of green beans that you know, they're selling them on sale for 50% or 30% or something like that. Well, a lot of people would have that supermarket mentality and they'd say, that's great. Let's buy more green beans, right? If, if they're on sale. So, because I know next week when I come to buy green beans, they're probably not going to be on sale anymore. I'm going to be buying at 100%. Well, that's true, right? So if you think of it from a, a, a supermarket mentality, well, the, the best time to buy is when prices are, are down. Now, what if I went back to the supermarket the following week, though, and instead of them going back up to full price, um, you know, let's say that they were now instead of being 30% off, now they're 50% off or 60% off or something like that. Would I be upset? Right? Should I be upset and and say, well, that's so stupid? You know, I should have, yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah, I should have bought my green beans the next week or something like that. I, I just wouldn't worry about it that much. I think the smartest way to approach this is to invest incrementally. I would not make a knee-jerk reaction on anything right now because things are so fluid. Um, and in other words, I, I certainly wouldn't go all in with all your cash. I think it's prudent to keep some cash right there for emergencies. But if you've got more than you know, say six, maybe on the outside, 12 months worth of living expenses set up in cash that now surely are, are earning close to zero 
with the Fed action over the weekend. It's something to think about. Well, you know, maybe we just had too much cash built up to begin with. You know, should we start putting some money in each month, right, into our investments? I would. I, I would personally. I think it's an opportunity. Uh, certainly for the, all of you who are working, you know, for companies and you're putting money into 401ks, stock purchase plans, things like that, we're all getting discounts on that. So, um, yeah, just, just some thoughts. I mean, there are definitely ways to take advantage of this. The other side of things, too, is, uh, you know, for folks who are retired right now, and they might feel a little bit discouraged, right? And I know a lot of you are and say, well, I don't have the money, right? I wish I had some money to invest, but I don't. And I've, I've got to take money out of my portfolio. Again, consider reducing withdrawals. And I, I think for a lot of people, this is just going to be a natural thing anyway, because we're going to go through a chunk of time. Again, even over months, it, it may be that our habits are changing. But my guess is a lot of people that might have gone on a vacation uh, probably won't. Right? There could have been some purchases that they were going to make that they won't buy. Does that hurt the economy for a while? Yes, absolutely. Uh, hopefully, those are just things that people are putting off, though, right? So that, that'll come in later on. But keep that in mind is that your own spending and my own spending likely is going to drop, right? We're probably not going to be spending as much money as we might have normally. And so it certainly is an opportunity to reduce the amount that you're taking out. Again, we can go through it with you, but basically just take your investments, what they're worth right now, not what they were worth a month ago, what they're worth right now, and look at how much you're taking out, take it down to four to 5% off of that amount. And then when things get better, you can certainly bump it back up. Um, again, in some situations though, clients are saying, you know what, I don't wanna take any money right out, uh, out right now. I don't really have to, I can wait until later on in the year when you know their belief at least is that things will be better by that point and they'll be able to sell out at higher prices. Yep. Um, last couple of questions, all somewhat related here um, in kind of the answer anyway. Uh, so, Talking about algorithm trading um, yeah. and do the circuit breakers um, uh, work for algorithm trading as well? The short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The circuit breakers say absolutely no trades whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, the important things to realize on this uh, are a couple things here is that um, yes, the algorithms do large trade blocks for uh, big brokerages. Uh, you need to remember also though especially in times like this there are people still behind the algorithms mm -hmm. and so yeah. there are people making adjustments behind there as well so it's not just a computer set um, and let to just do whatever mathematically um, the other important part on that is kind of the fundamental analysis so when we talk about fundamentals of a company fundamental analysis that's price to earnings ratio that's uh, you know, how much cash do they have? How, how much are they leveraged? You know, how much debt do they have? Um, things like this, like the actual, yeah, perfect mm -hmm. slide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so these are the things that actually provide actual value within the market. Uh, and that's important to remember, just like we were saying before, is Microsoft worth worse, worth 30% less than it was maybe six weeks ago? Mm -hmm. According to fundamental analysis, probably not. Uh, so a lot of what we're seeing right now, and yes, it does get exacerbated by the algorithm trading, definitely makes for a much bigger volatility from day to day. Uh, but really when it comes down to it, it's that fundamental analysis. Uh, we had someone ask on here, you know, during 2008 uh, financial crisis, uh, GM was one of those companies that had to be bailed out by the yep. government. Yep. Uh, and he's yep. asking, you know, did a lot of people lose everything in GM stock when that happened. Yeah. And you know, some yeah. some people did, but yeah. the ones who did were the ones who sold it. Right. They sold it at the bottom. There are plenty of other people out there who said, you know what, this is terrible and yeah, it sucks, but why would I sell something that I paid money for at next to nothing? Yeah, and, that's, so, and that's the benefit of being diversified too and not mm -hmm. having all your eggs in one basket, which uh, none of our clients do anyway, but other people might, but not concentrating too much in, in one piece uh, because, it, you know, because there, could there be a company that goes bankrupt out of this? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, they may lose all their assets and then your stock is worth nothing. So uh, it's very important to do this in a very diversified way. I, I certainly wouldn't try to uh, try to outguess this, right? Because all companies are being impacted. Um, you know, and that the strong ones will end up doing well coming out of it. Yeah, fundamental analysis. The one of the quote for those of you who have been around for a while, you might remember owning Fidelity Magellan Fund back in the day. Uh, Peter Lynch uh, says far more money has been lost by investors preparing for corrections or trying to anticipate corrections 
and has been lost in the corrections themselves. Now, again, based on what I mentioned before, this isn't a correction, this is a bear market, right? I think you could substitute those um, things in there. I'm sure Peter would still agree with mm -hmm. that, that uh, it could be that people are trying to prepare for one and outtime the market. It just doesn't work. Um, as much as we would like to. The other thing on the circuit breaker question is, I think uh, for some people they think, well, the circuit breaker, that'll protect me from losing money. That is not true. All that is is just a pause in trading. Mm -hmm. So it's important to keep that in mind is that we have seen markets like this before uh, where the downs are severe and actually far more severe even than we've seen. Uh, oftentimes uh, during a really, really severe downturn, the market may lose over half of its value before it bottoms and goes back up. But remember, the market right now is trying to figure out what, is, what does this mean, right? And it's going to continue asking that question every millisecond the market's open, right? Is what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? So over the next few weeks, one thing to consider is that once this thing does peak, more clarity from a fiscal policy standpoint, the market might be looking ahead and saying, what does this mean? And well, this means recovery, right? This means that we can see the, the light mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel here, that there is another side to this. And, and although, you know, for a lot of people, especially if you've been really glued to the news right now, uh, you might have a lot of anxiety, fear. Um, some of you don't at all, by the way, some of you that are on the call right now, I, I know because I talked to you, right? Then you're not fearful, at least you weren't um, last week when we talked. So that's one thing to think about is just, you know, think about the other end of this. Think about when this is over and, and think about how, how do you want to be positioned? Do you want to be that person that stuck with their asset allocation and stayed disciplined? And again, some of you will even take advantage of it, right? And put money in, right? When the market's down or, or stop your withdrawals or lower your withdrawals, you'll have done some stuff, right? To take advantage of it. But um, on the other end of things, there, there's a reason to be optimistic, right? Because uh, then that's, that is faith, right? And unfortunately, we don't have... Um, when it comes to losing money and money in the market, there's nobody out there, the president, Congress, uh, you know, pick whoever the most powerful person or the smartest person in the world you think, uh, you know, would know things that they're not going to protect anybody from the market going down. Uh, they're not going to be able to predict where the bottom is. They're not going to be able to predict the recovery, at least with any precision. So keep that in mind is that it is a faith element, right? That uh, we just have faith that we get through things like this and that no matter how bad they are or, or now no matter how bad they seem uh, but on the other end of things you know there is light at the end of the tunnel and, and certainly things will get better and i i think my belief and certainly for my family um, myself we believe that this will pass it's disruptive it's kind of interesting actually in some ways uh, it's kind of interesting to see kind of how everybody's reacting and how creative we can be right as a business and, and as individuals so it's important. You might have to be your own psychologist right now, um, and, and I am too, certainly, because 80% of everything is psychology. And if, if we're not acting as our own psychologist right now and, and actively kind of thinking through this as far as the best way to react, uh, it could actually result in us having a lot of, number one, unneeded anxiety, right? It doesn't have to be that bad. But secondly, you know, maybe acting in a way that in the end, you know, a few months from right now, six months from right now, I think some people might really regret, right? Especially if they had sold out and gone really conservative or something like that. Almost certainly, unless you're just the luckiest person in the world, and that's great if you are. Um, but uh, if you're the luckiest person in the world, uh, you may have gotten out and gotten in at the very bottom. I, I don't know anybody who's ever done that uh, consistently anyway. Um, you know, there are a few people I think that have uh, have timed certain markets and got lucky, but to do that over and over, it comes back to Peter Lynch's quote here, right? That most certainly, if you keep trying to do that, it's just going to result in you gain very bad returns over time. So, what else? Any other questions? That is it for right. today. Good deal. Well, again, we're going to be doing Q and A's. I'm certainly invite anybody that you'd like to. Uh, you can pass this link on. Uh, we don't have a limit. I think Go to Webinar gives us a thousand. A person limit, which we didn't come anywhere close to today. Wouldn't that be fun, right? If we got we like hit our thousand person limit. So feel free to pass this on to your family, to your coworkers, to anybody um, you know that you think would benefit from this. Especially if you can tell that they've got a lot of anxiety and they really don't have anybody to help them right now. Certainly, we want to be able to be that voice and, and be able to to step in and and show them. Um, you know, here's the way to get through something like this, right? This is what's worked in the past. This is what, you know, historically has always happened. And again, 100% of the time, there's a bull market on the, the side of the bear. We're going to look back. Uh, we're going to say, wow, wasn't that crazy? Um, not just the market, but, you know, shutting down the NBA and all these things, right, that are happening right now. I, I think there will be a day 
um, you can just anticipate that, right? Just know that there will be a day and have faith that that, that day will come and um, you know, just want to be well positioned at the other end of it. So just know we're, we're here. We're uh, certainly open for business. For those of you who want to do virtual calls instead of coming in, again, no problem. We're already used to operating like that. So no interruption in business here. Looking forward to serving you and I hope you have a great week. Thanks. Take care.